Don't pretend with me, Dexter. You deliberately planned this festival to conflict with my wedding. It's a shabby, vindictive gesture. Ooh, harsh words. Well, let's be honest. I'll admit it, I'm still in love with oh. you. I don't want you to get married again because I still think you can become a wonderful woman. Thank you. I haven't the same high hopes for you. Hello, beautiful people. How are you all today? If you don't know me already, hi, my name is Silvina, and today I wanted to start a new series on my channel, which is analyzing celebrities' style and how to recreate some of their outfits. You probably don't know this, or maybe you do because you've seen her on the back of my videos, but Grace Kelly is like my biggest idol. She's my inspiration, so it was logical that I started with her. Her life story is quite inspiring too because she went from the girl next door, although she was quite affluent, to movie star and then to princess. And her fashion style is flawless. You'd never see Grace Kelly in a bad outfit. Her style was classy, sophisticated and timeless, but also fun and sexy at the same time. She is undisputedly one of the most influential fashion icons, inspiring millions of women throughout the decades with her classic but elevated style. So if you're interested in going through Grace Kelly's style with me, just keep watching. But first I wanted to say that these series are going to stay for a while, so if you're interested in me analyzing and recreating any celebrity style in particular just leave a comment down below and also like this video so I know that you're interested in it also if you're not subscribed yet make sure that you do because you're actually missing out on great content about fashion beauty lifestyle and mindset lastly you can follow me on social media I will leave the links in the description box so you can check it out after this video So last night I was watching the movie High Society, which by the way is one of my favorites, if not my favorite Grace Kelly movie, I've seen that movie like 50 times, and I can never stop admiring Grace Kelly's outfit in that movie. Helen Rose, which is the costume designer on this film, made Grace Kelly's last appearance on the big screen really special, and it went all out in my opinion. I think it was the perfect way for her to say goodbye to being a movie star and becoming a royal, and her outfits reflect that because they all exude class and elegance. And we're clearly not here to talk about high society's costumes, but I do feel that Grace's movie style and her personal style overlapped to some extent, especially in movies like Rare Window to Catch Thief, High Society, and even to some extent in The Country Girl. It is also very interesting to see how Grace's movie style evolved throughout the years, which of course reflects the evolution of her own personal style. But that is a discussion for another video. That being said, for the first outfit, I wanted to recreate the first outfit in which we see Grace in High Society, because it's very relatable, timeless, and I think it's definitely an outfit that she would have worn in her day-to-day -day life. And why I say it's very relatable is because all the pieces she's wearing, you can find them now in any shop you want. And we're talking about a 1950s outfit, so that's how you define a classic style. It stands the test of time and is also accepted by a wide range of people. This outfit is a monochrome outfit composed by high-waisted beige pants. They are tailored and quite straight. A silky beige button-down shirt and a brown leather belt. She knew how to dress her body to perfection. In my opinion, she was between an hourglass and a rectangle. I wouldn't say she's a full hourglass because she lacks a little bit of curviness, but I wouldn't say she's a full rectangle either because she has a very small, undefined waist. But overall, her body was very proportionate and harmonious, and she wasn't that tall or that short. She was quite average. In terms of accessories, she paired it with the red bandana on her pocket and for shoes she went for some red espadrilles to make the look cohesive and casual. In my case, to recreate this outfit, I started with these high-waisted camel tailor pants and I paired it with this satin beige shirt. And I also added a brown belt, very similar to the one she has. When it comes to shoes, since I don't have espadrilles, I decided to replace that for some white sneakers. And I think this is perfect because it still maintains the casual essence of the outfit, but add some more modern element.
the majority of her most iconic outfits are from when she was a movie star and they are logically based on the 1950s silhouette that is composed of big voluminous skirts and fitted tops. This style is what's called the new look, it's a post-war style characterized by super feminine pieces to create an hourglass figure. This new look was initially introduced by Christian Dior in his 1947 collection to rebel to some extent against the utility clothes and the more masculine shapes that were typical in the clothes of the Second World War. It meant a contrast but also an evolution from the practicality and necessity of clothes during the war because of course women had to work during the war. And this new look represented a need for liberation, expression, and somehow dressing up as a part of your identity after the war was over. The whole new look silhouette is still relevant to this day and is especially good for hourglass shapes or anyone that wants to highlight their waist. But big circle skirts are not that practical for the modern women's daily life, so it could totally be replaced for A-line skirts nowadays to create a very similar silhouette. So that being said, the second look was inspired by this picture. As you can see, it's a very new look, classic look with a full circle skirt, a black cardigan with matching details, a belt to define the waist even more, a scarf, and some stilettos which seems like they have some sort of platform in them. So for the interpretation of this look, I started with this cardigan which has some pearl details on the front, this printed A-line skirt, a black scarf and some platform heels. If you feel that platforms are a little too much for you, you could totally replace this for some black classic stilettos. Well-tailored pieces made with high-quality fabrics were what defined Grace Kelly's style. She never wore an ill-fitting piece or with a low-quality fabric. She knew exactly what suited her and what not and she really took advantage of it. She also really liked mauve collar and high-neck pieces, we have seen her multiple times wearing it, and light-knitted cardigans were a staple for her. Which brings us to look number 3. In this look, she's wearing a very nicely fitted dress with mauve collar and it seems to be made of linen or a very lightweight fabric. And she added a cardigan on top of her shoulders which gives off a very stylish but effortless vibe. In terms of accessories, she loved to wear headbands and that's what she added to this look. A very delicate bracelet and some flat sandals. So to recreate this outfit, it was very difficult for me to find a mauve collar dress. I honestly could not find it. But I did find something similar and it's a dress that I think she would have definitely worn back in the day, which I paired with my cream cardigan, a beige headband, and some flat sandals with crystal and pearl details in them, which gives more interest to the outfit. If you want, you can add a silk scarf and some sunglasses, which totally adds to the casual summer Grace Kelly look.
color palette was quite neutral. You very rarely saw her in bright colors, especially not during the 1950s. We did see her in a variety of colors when it came to her movie roles, but not that much on her personal style. And even when we did see her in colors, she always kept it quite toned down in pastel pink, green, baby blue, and even sometimes red. And when she became more mature, she did experience with the colors and prints a little bit more, which could also be a reflection of the evolution of trends throughout the decades in which color and prints were a big part of the 60s and 70s. And let me tell you, Grace Kelly, when she was more mature, she was just as beautiful as she was when she was younger. Her beautifulness wasn't only because she was pretty, she also had a beautiful and sophisticated aura. With that being said, I'm going to move on to look number four, which is also a very iconic look of her. It's very classic and relatable because it's basically a black turtleneck and some cream or very light color white leg pants. I assume they are white leg, but they could also be straight leg. Just like with look number one, you can find these pieces on any store right now. And since they are so classic and timeless, they are in fashion now and they will be in fashion in the future. So for this look, I started with a black turtleneck and I paired it with some very lightweight stone pants. Then she's not really wearing accessories, or at least that we can see in the picture. But of course, I added my pearl earrings and some nude stilettos to elongate my legs. She did not only wear simple and classic outfits, she once in a while liked to show a more edgy look while still maintaining her feminine and elegant style. For the next look, I saw some pictures of her in some embroidered pants and a very ruffled button-up shirt which has a very Spanish and tornado style, which is honestly so good because it separates her a little bit from the pretty and perfect looks and it makes her more fun and bold. So in this case, I started with some printed pants and I styled it with my round neck button an up shirt with details. One important thing when recreating outfits from other people is that you don't necessarily have to have the same pieces but the pieces that you put together have to represent the same concept. In this case, the look that she put together is a very Spanish style, like I said, and she wore some embroidered pants, which are actually a statement piece, so I decided to also wear some statement pants, although they are not similar to the original pants. So then I put my hair in a bun and I painted my lips red, which is what I think she was wearing. In terms of shoes, I paired it with some black mules, although I think she was wearing some black espadrilles. This look is so cool because it's very modern and fashionable even nowadays. she did outstandingly good was accessorizing. 
Her clothes most of the time were quite simple and classic, but her accessories elevated all of her looks. She really knew how to style her accessories to look super elegant, and she really made a good use of all of them. So her looks are consistent, but also different from one another, and that is due to her accessories. In terms of hair and makeup, she was known for using very little makeup, unlike some of her contemporary peers, and used to wear her hair short, either pushed back or in a bun. Pearl and diamonds were her most worn jewelry, but when it came to other accessories, she wore hats, headbands, scarves were a big part of her wardrobe, gloves, classic shoes, and also bags. And we all know that with the new look style, having matchy matchy accessories was actually really popular because it was a reflection of good style and class. In that same line, Hermes actually renamed one of its bags to the Kelly bag because of her, since she popularized it after falling in love with it in the set of To Catch a Thief. And she was also seen wearing it and also pictured when she was rumored to be pregnant and she used the bag to hide it. After that, the bag was popularly known as the Kelly bag, but actually Hermes only changed its name officially in 1977. Nowadays, the Kelly bag is one of the most iconic and expensive bags out there. For the last outfit, I wanted to recreate another classic, which is a little black dress number with a pearl necklace, a pearl bracelet, and a headband. This is a totally timeless outfit that looks good even today, and it's appropriate for every occasion, so you will never be out of place with this look. In my case, like I said, it's a very easy to recreate outfit and I wore a very similar middle-length dress, a pearl necklace and a headband. as an honorary mention, although of course I won't be able to recreate it. I wanted to talk a little about her wedding dress, which inspired millions of women out there for their own wedding dresses, including Kate Middleton. And to be honest, when I do get married, if I ever do, it will be my inspiration too. The dress was designed by Helen Rose, which is the same costume designer for High Society and many other movies. And it has to be probably one of the most iconic and recreated wedding dresses of all time because it's just perfection. Everything about that dress exudes sophistication and elegance. The dress was gifted by MGM Studios to Grace and it was handmade by the studio's wardrobe department. This dress was her entryway to royalty and although I think that she didn't need any validation, it was her way to say, I'm royal now, not just a movie star. That's why the high collar, the lace, the sleeves, it gave off a very serious and regal vibe and she looked like a total princess. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. Please comment down below which one was your favorite outfit. Like I said, the great thing about Grace Kelly's style is that it's so timeless and attainable that you can totally recreate it now in the 21st century and it will still look stylish and modern. Let me know also what other celebrities do you want me to do next and also feel free to leave your styling tips in the comment section so other people can get ideas from it. This is a community we can all learn from each other. Lastly, don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn the notifications on so you know when I upload more videos. I will see you all in my next video. I hope you have a wonderful day as always. Bye!